that luckiest <coughs> ones are those who are able to make a living out of their passion. However, such people are very few. I mean, all of you will agree that such people are very, very few who make a living out of their passion. Therefore, next best thing is to develop a passion, a hobby, outside the work, and be passionate about it. Organizations need to offer avenues to employees for work-life balance, to enable them to develop a hobby, a passion, which fires up their enthusiasm and creates a passion to excel, deliver at work as well. Being productive at workplace is linked to being happy. Now, we are, what we are trying to say is that there is a link being passionate. And if you read the, this quote, a very famous person, so what is the takeaway from Herbert Tubman's quote? That we need to dream. We need to dream big. Our former president, Dr. A.P. Abdul Kalam said, Dream is not that which makes you see while sleeping. It is something that does not let you see. People that get into the habit of dreaming big will accomplish those goals because they have the right of, <coughs> the right mindset to do it. You need to look at life with the perspective that you can achieve anything that is possible. If you can accomplish your dreams, why won't you go after them? Why would you settle for a smaller dream? So the takeaway from this is we need to dream bigger and achieve bigger. If we don't dream big, we will never achieve big. So here I want to share my story with you. It's a story which I have lived myself. So that small story maybe that gives you a glimpse of what is possible to achieve. I would like to tell you about my dream, realizing my dream when I was a young, young officer. When I joined the company, I wanted to do photography in my life. I wanted to be a nature photographer, I wanted to be a wildlife photographer, but I wanted a good camera. I did not have money to buy. So I accumulated money in my 15 20 years of service. I collected money and I had what you can say in 2003 I went into serious uh, photography. I bought a camera called F80. That is a Nikon's uh, camera, F80, who's the photographers will know. That this is the smallest camera, a digital SLR. So I bought with 28,000 rupees. I went to Singapore and bought that. The big story. And now we came across many people in my life who encouraged me to do it, who encouraged me to realize my dream. Many of you may have a dream, but to realize it, you need people. You need people, the partners, the people who encourage you to realize your dream. There are people like, I would suggest, and I'll just share with you some of the names who are big celebrity in photography today. The person called Kiyal Raja Ponsing. He is the person with whom who taught me photography in his school in Chennai. Well, <coughs> ambitions for academy. He is a brand ambassador for Kodak today. And a very passionate photographer. Then a great uh, cinematographer called, again both are familiar, they have Mr. Sarna Kumar who works today and uh, he works for National Geography, he works for Animal Planet. So these are people who gave me breaks. So there are many people who came in my way, here are some of the ones I have just shared with you. Then uh, some of the magazines which gave me break, the magazines like Swagat, which you see in Indian Airlines in Air India. And another great person today is IIT, I am graduate. It's called Kalyan Patra. He runs a magazine called Shishti. You must be saying, you must be you know, wondering why I'm sharing with you this. Because whenever you are dreaming big, you need people to support you in that dream. So if you can dream big, you can always achieve that. Then came my posting in 2005 in Mumbai. There, my wife bought a small flat in a place called Karjan, which is 77 kilometers from Malara West, and it's got Western Guards. So he was the one who, who, who said, so my wife said that no, no, we'll buy a small flat there, so that is there. We used to go every weekend. I ran into some of the local tribals, the local people. There was a big hill. They told me, I said, look, can I go there? He said, yes, I'll take you. We will take you. So all those 
became my partners and used to go every weekend for one year. I did this exploration on a weekend. And then I mapped the entire flora fauna of the Western Ghats. Then I came, some of the friends from the Home and Natural Research Society came. They helped me to identify the species. So what I did was I basically mapped the entire biodiversity of the area. Then I ran into a very famous person called his name is Sanjay Munga. <coughs> He's a famous uh, writer and environmentalist based in Mumbai. He told me, no, no, no. Your book, you can make a write a book. I said, can I write a book? I'm not a writer. He said, no, no, you can write a book, your portfolio is good. So he was the one who said, but what you have to do is, you have to go back to the place where you had the, did the shoot. And you have to get some snakes, because Western Hearts are known for snakes. By the time in 2010, I had come to Dehradun. I went back twice to Cleve in 2010 and 11, and did my portfolio, a very important portfolio. And here, and finally, I wrote a book called Karja Diaries. And uh, Mr. Sharma was present at that time. In January 14, when it was launched by the previous chairman and the uh, honorable minister. Uh, so I'm going to share with you some of the photographs from that portfolio. And it's just give you a glimpse when I mean, all photographs are not here, but some of the uh, difference of the resolution, what resolution you have, and what kind of a. Uh, so these are some of the landscapes. Let me run you through, take you through the place where I live. So this first is a waterfall. This is a main Karjat waterfall which is basically the water, biggest waterfall of Karjat Hills and above hills about 2, two kilometers of hills are there which I uh, mapped and we'll do some of the next. <coughs> so my passion has enabled me to discover the vast biodiversity which nature has to offer. Biodiversity has several components like numbers, composition, distribution, species and landscape units in a given system. All these components play a role in maintaining life support systems in long term. Well known examples include cascading effects of decrease in sea, orchard populations that led to coastal erosion in North Pacific, and loss of large expenses of foreign nature vegetation in the Lentana shrub, whose expansion of the landscape is prompted by the manor bird originally introduced to 